what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM and this is the version 7.7 .7. the build date here is 6th April 2023 the bugs that I have faced are mostly gone but some of them are still present I'll talk about that but first let me show you the about section so here we have the Evolution X logo up top still and the Android version is showing as 13 and the Evolution X version shows as 7.7 .7 Licon and the Raphael name is there because this is the Redmi K20 Pro and let me tell you I have been daily driving on this particular ROM I have my primary SIM card on this one for about a couple of days now my experience has been really good with it definitely stays a lot more smoother when compared to other devices like Redmi Note 10 Pro and stuff the security patch here is March 5th 2023 the stock kernel here 4.14 Soviet star the build date again shows as 6th April 2023 the build mentor is still Stalix and we have the SNX readers showing as enforcing. System updated is still present and right now in the system updated you will get an Evolution X kind of logo right here. I don't know if it was there earlier but yeah right now it shows that. Looks cool I would say. And here in the gesture settings we still have the quick tap actions. And if you enable them you will get multiple options like these. The quickly open camera and stuff. Then we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it we have the pill length and the pill radius customization. And with full list of pill length and radius this is how it will look. I mean button space you can change the space between the keyboard and the bottom of the screen. Then we have the back gesture animation. Haptic feedback. The swipe to invoke assistant is also there as you can see. And we have the left edge right edge customization. Amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. And in terms of the advanced gestures these are the options that you will get for the extended swipe actions. Three button navigation is also there. Let me go back. We have the one handed mode that works perfectly fine. Swipe quick screenshot is also there and that is actually working fine. There is the share edit delete lens and the capture more feature everything works perfectly fine and in the pop-up camera settings we get these amount of options for the front camera raising sound and stuff now let me talk about the things that i have faced by the way this is how the stock launcher looks like this is the pixel launcher present by default the evolution X launcher has been removed but this is the newer kind of pixel launcher i'll show you the settings panel and stuff for that but here let me tell you the picture in picture issue which was there earlier is still present so if you are someone who has been not happy with the pip issue you still would not be happy with it but if you're someone who can just disable PIP and you can use the apps normally animation stuck issue is still there but a simple reboot should fix that issue and it did fix my issue when I faced it now one more thing let me talk about it even I could not flash the evolution X ROM and it was not simply booting because it was stuck into the boot animation and it used to go nowhere from there for the latest evolution X builds on the Redmi K20 Pro and let me tell you what I did to fix it. So I used the latest Orange Fox recovery. I formatted data and rebooted the recovery once. By the way, my storage is decrypted guys. And from there, I flashed the Orange Fox recovery zip itself. So after flashing the Orange Fox recovery zip, it just clean flashes your recovery. That's what I had to do. And after that, when I flashed the firmware, the ROM and the DFE, it booted perfectly fine. So if you are facing boot loop issue, just make sure to flash the Orange Fox recovery again. Then you can flash the ROM and stuff normally. One more thing is that if you're switching to this ROM and you use Google App Data Backup and stuff, definitely make sure that you use a separate app like SMS Backup and Restore to actually keep a backup of your SMS and call logs. Because here after flashing this ROM, it will not be able to restore even the Google App Data Backup, the call logs and the SMS will not be restored. So make sure you back that up manually with an app like this. And one more thing that I want to make a point about is that on the Redmi Note 10 Pro latest Evolution X ROM, there was huge RAM management issues. But here that is simply not present, no issues whatsoever with RAM management that I have faced over here. So you do not need to worry about RAM management issues for the Redmi K20 Pro at least. Now let me talk about the stock launcher here in the home screen settings. Yes, this is a pixel launcher. It has the size and disabling option and stuff, but no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen because this is a pixel launcher. Everything is working perfectly fine. Like swiping left will get you to the Google's discover page. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer. Everything is buttery smooth. And if you scroll down on the home screen, it will bring the quick setting panel just like this. And the widgets that I have added are working perfectly fine, but the battery widget somehow I cannot really make it smaller. So that's how it is. But otherwise, yes, the widgets of the like Android 13 and stuff is working perfectly fine and the animations of them are working great too. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, it has the MIUI camera or Leica camera, you can say by default. And with that, everything is working like the 2x telephoto lens, 0.66 or ultra wide angle lens. All these things are working great. Even the documents mode, the pro mode, everything is working. And you can shoot pro mode videos up to 4K 60 FPS. 
if you are noticing the portrait selfies should be working perfectly fine so you're taking portrait photos and stuff is not a problem there is the 48 megapixel mode too that should be working fine too there is a night mode also so yeah the MIUI camera or the Leica camera present by default is great and it has been working perfectly fine you can also install gcam like the lmc.4 the lens switching option may not work with this so you have to keep that in mind otherwise the stock camera is the leica camera and i'm really happy for that now let's talk about the display kind of settings yes it, this one does have up to 102 hertz of refresh rate you can actually overclock the display right from this toggle if you just add this toggle in the quick setting panel but i have been using with the 72 hertz and that is working perfectly fine and it does not drain a lot of battery it does not shift the colors a lot more so that's why I think this 72 hertz is a sweet spot for me at least. But you can of course go 81 hertz or 90 kind of hertz or 102 hertz if you want. But in terms of the other quick setting toggle, I have added a couple of them like the always on display anti flicker, and there is like two descending and anti flicker mode. And both of them becomes a little bit buggy while like you are watching a video from the MX player, VLC player kind of things. Here we have the HEVC codec for the screen recording and we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. Dark theme and stuff, everything is there, the Google Home controls, the Bluetooth toggle, everything is working perfectly fine, you do not need to worry about it. In terms of power menu, this is how it appears, there is the background blur kind of effect and as you can see if I tap on advanced, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. But in the quick setting panel, even the light theme, the quick setting panel still stays dark. And this is how it is but of course in the dark theme even the notification panel will go dark talking about the customizations yes in the theme settings there are plethora of options like the theme style you can change right now color source you can choose and the luminance chroma factor and the tint background etc options are there the dark theme you can schedule it from right here and we have the custom lock screen color then we have these lock screen clock fonts and again plethora of fonts are here you can choose from any of them by the way i have been using with this one looks beautiful for me at least let me show you how it looks and this is how it looks on the always on display for me at least it looks beautiful and here let me actually show you sometimes yes the fingerprint scanner does not work over here that is how it is there will be a fix for this i'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed and stuff in detail later on we have the head and body fonts plethora of fonts are here and nothing dot font and stuff everything is present you do not need to worry lock screen clock font is there the icon pack signal icons wi-fi style everything is there i'm not going to show you every detail of it because it will take a lot more time i have showed this section multiple times in the past that's why i'm just keeping everything i'm just gonna hover around every settings over here so that you can glimpse an eye on it in call vibrations options then in the quick setting panel we have this label text and stuff if you scroll down more we have the show data usage then the brightness slider position you can change from right here into the power menu we have the advanced reboot and the other options to choose from in the gestures we have the long press power button toggle torch double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar in the lock screen settings we have the edge lighting udfps settings and there you will have the udfps icon picker plethora of icons are here no need to worry about it and we have the udfps animation also so these are the animations which are present by default we have the media cover art then the ambient fake gestures and stuff in the buttons we have the navigation kind of bar per app volume control by the way this is how the volume panel looks you can expand go into the output source changing option right here and of course expansion works perfectly fine and you can put the phone into vibrant or silent from right here let me go back we have the animations and you can change the screen of animation crt to scale have the game space smart pixel unlimited google photo storage unlock higher piece in games volume panel timeout the jitter kind of settings is there ignore window secure flags then the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer for convenience and the other options are also there let's talk about the battery settings yes this is one of my favorite things of the k20 pros evolution x rom because it shows every detail of the battery like the design battery capacity current battery capacity charging cycles and the battery temperature as well let me tell you yes with fast charging the device does get hot a little bit because it's summertime it goes like 40 to 42 degrees i would say but otherwise fast charging is working perfectly fine you do not need to worry there is this battery optimization per app you can choose battery charge warning smart charging everything is there then we have the battery saver and stuff now let me talk about it with the aku battery app and with my estimated screen on time here it shows is about 7 hours and 40 minutes but this is how much is estimated with my kind of usage and we have the screen off or the standby time you can say for about a week and the combined news more than a day so definitely the battery life over here is amazing it will last you for a whole long day no issues whatsoever 
and in the health section if you are seeing my battery health is at 96 percent well that's because i have replaced the battery i have a new battery over here i have got about 60 cycles as you saw with a brand new battery seven plus hours of screen on time is not a problem on the redmi k20 pro and it is just marvelous experience in my opinion in the sound and vibration settings we have the media call ring etc volume controls if you scroll down more we have the per app volume control and the dial pad tones in call notification and stuff if you scroll down more we have the silent and media mute kind of feature in the me sound enhancer we have this newer kind of look of the me audio direct and with that i have been using with the youth edition the sound quality with the headphone jack and the blue headsets everything is perfectly fine no need to worry about it we have the choose preset option there are multiple presets like the bass booster balanced bass reduction etc smart scenes are there enable hi-fi option is also there then we have the haptic feedback or the vibration intensity of the whole UI and the clear speaker option is also there you can use it if you want display settings in here we have the brightness level adaptive brightness lock screen kind of customization and the pocket detection then the dark theme we have the display size and text the live display is also there and we have the anti flicker then the color calibration right here even the display mode is there like you can put the display in outdoor bright sun mode to make it really really bright the colors i have been using it with the saturated you can use the rgb control over here too then we have the allow window level blurs then the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can change from right here there are plethora of options but make sure you do not change the lower power refresh rate because once you turn on the battery saver it will switch the display to 60 hertz so that will save the battery the screen protector mode is there and we have the prevent accidental wake up wake up on plug and the per app refresh rate changing option but you can do that to only 60 hertz and 90 hertz there is no 1 or 2 hertz option for that now in the wallpapers and styles here you can change the wallpapers i have been using the wall p app for the wallpaper changing and let me tell you there is this live bloom option too so this will give you gyroscope kind of effect of the wallpapers if you are noticing it will look really really cool as you can see you can use these wallpapers too but there is the feathers and the other live wallpapers like the living universe you need to download them and there are even more pixel kind of wallpapers there is the wallpaper colors up to 16 colors for basic and wallpaper colors dark theme is there the themed icons are there and the shortcuts well this section i showed you for this in the redmi note 10 pros video i messed it up because it i said it's not working but yes they are actually working i'll show you here right now so what i was doing is uh, i was in the lock screen so here let me actually show you as you can see i was doing this and it says touch and hold shortcut over here i didn't read it so that was my bad but yeah if you just touch and hold onto it as you can see right now it has turned on the torch and even i cannot turn it off over here by just one click but yeah, it will turn off if i just click over here but to actually turn it off i have to keep holding it so that's when it will turn off the torch even the google home controls if i keep tapping and holding as you can see it opens perfectly fine and i can just turn off or turn on the bulb that i have over here so yeah this is great everything is working fine with these lock screen clock shortcuts and i'm just loving it in the security settings there is the quick unlock and stuff i have already added the face unlock and fingerprint in the more settings there is the app lock and it's not buggy right now even after a reboot the app lock still works over here you do not need to worry about it right now let me show you so this is how the always on display again looks like and i did change the clock again and here in the always on display too you will see this weather and the date and stuff if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it opens so let me show you one more time yes the fingerprint scanner right now is working perfectly fine if i show you up close no issues whatsoever let me try one more time and right now i'll just disable the always on display so that i can show you the pickup gesture if it's working i have turned it on but here let me show you yeah as you can see the pickup gesture is working perfectly fine and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it works let me try one more time from the like screen off and here i'm just tapping the fingerprint scanner it wakes up the screen and unlocks let me try one more time and yeah it is working perfectly fine right now and if i just swipe up there is the face unlock and it is working perfectly fine but it is a motorized front camera so it will take some time to actually unlock the device and otherwise as you can see the app lock looks like this and if i just tap the fingerprint scanner and it opens so yeah app lock and stuff is working perfectly fine no need to worry about it talking about basic things yes it passes the safety net test right out of the box so you can use banking apps without any worries and i have been using banking apps no problems whatsoever with that in the drm info settings you will get the l1 certification so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any problems also with the settings if you enable that google photos unlimited backup from the customizations you do get google photos unlimited backup no issues with that and in the edit section in the google photos there is the magic eraser you can do that and like edit some photos if you want 
Yep, that worked pretty well. So Magic Eraser is working perfectly fine here. Now let me tell you about the overall performance. Well, in terms of daily driving, I did not face any kind of issues. It is working perfectly fine as you can see in terms of scrolling and stuff. It is very smooth, no issues whatsoever that I have faced in terms of like, like switching apps and stuff. It's really, really smooth, no problems at all. But let me tell you, if you have faced the animation glitch of that PIP kind of issue, Make sure to reboot the device once that will fix all the issues with it. Other than that, no problems whatsoever of like huge lagging or stuttering at all in this ROM. I did not face any of those issues. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea of overall performance of the UI. For this particular ROM, it evolves almost like in two to three days, there is a newer update. It fixes bugs and sometimes there are like some bugs appear, but yes, the developer does make a hard work on this to actually fix this ROM so that it can provide one of the best daily driving experiences for the Redmi K20 Pro, I feel. So definitely I do appreciate the efforts of the developers. It has the MIUI camera, it has the high refresh rate, it has customizations, it has the safety net working, it has the Google Photos Unlimited backup, you name it, it is there. This is kind of a ROM it is for the latest Evolution X 7.7 .7, that's what I can say and this is available for the Redmi K20 Pro and other devices too. You can try it on your own device if it's supported for your device and if you have Redmi K20 Pro I'll definitely recommend you to try the latest Evolution X ROM. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. If you want your friends to know about the latest Evolution X ROM you can share this video with them. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.